Greetings traders, this is Houston Trung from thetradingedge.org and here is your weekly market outlook for February the 17th to 21st, 2020. And this coming week will be a shortened holiday trading week for the uh, uh, North American markets. On, uh, on Monday we do have U.S. President's Day, so that will be a day off for most equities traders. So expect to have a, a, um, a shortened trading week. However, the shortened trading week does have the possibility of heightened heightened volatility. Lately, there's been a lot of uh, weekend risk or overnight uh, overnight risk, weekend risk, and usually the markets have a lot to digest on Monday mornings as the markets open. It's a lot of jostling uh, for position, and a lot of folks have to readjust their their uh, macro view based upon the ongoing news flow that's been coming out. Uh, uh, over the weekends. So expect it to be no different this coming week, especially with the Monday off. Um, you can expect that the Tuesday open will probably be quite volatile. Uh, certainly, some people made some bets going into uh, into the end of Friday, and those bets will either turn out to be right <laughs> or wrong on Tuesday morning when the markets, on the, you know, the, the major markets open, uh, U.S. equities, that is. So, Let's uh, talk about the econ calendar and the earnings calendar, then we'll get into the charts. So uh, this coming week for the econ calendar, uh, no major econ news on Monday, of course, because of the holiday. Tuesday, uh, fairly quiet day. Uh, Wednesday, so that's when things kind of kick off. You got the housing starts number, the PPI number at 8.30, and then FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. So everyone's going to be watching to see, does the coronavirus story continue to creep into the decisions uh, the, the, the continue to decision uh, continue to affect the decision making of the Fed do they continue to keep uh, interest rates and the uh, you know perhaps the um, the likelihood that they will remain sort of dovish on, on, on interest rates will that remain to remain the same or have we hit the peak coronavirus news story and uh, and are we overblowing the um, you know, the potential impact on the global economy time will tell no one knows at this point. On Thursday, jobs claims 8.30, and of course that oil report remains uh, 10.30 on Thursday. And on Friday, we have existing home sales, and the home the home builders have been on fire. So continue to watch to see how that number affects the home builders, because I'll show a couple of charts at the end of the of today's video, and, and those names have been on fire. So, uh, earnings calendar, again, very soft, uh, or, or very slow uh, Monday because of, the, uh, because of the holiday. But Tuesday, we got Walmart reporting. That'll be the big one there. Wednesday, uh, lots of names reporting. So again, Wednesday, Thursday, lots of names. So make sure you're you're checking the earnings calendar. That's uh, and not taking any earnings risk. That it's that's unnecessary or unintended. And uh, on Friday, only maybe about 20 names reporting. But should, should be some interesting ones like uh, like uh, like Deer. Uh, we want to see how those industrials are 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 are, are handling the potential global slowdown because of the coronavirus story. So with that being said, let's get into our charts now and let's see what the markets told us this week, what transpired and where does it leave us. So as always, we begin at the very highest level. We want to start with the forest and then we'll start looking at the trees, right? So right now on the VIX chart, it's an inside month still. So this is a bit of a contrast to things like the Qs and the Spies and the Dow that are hitting all-time highs. Uh, the VIX right now has not made these all-time lows yet. I won't call them all-time lows because this thing will go to zero. But um, it has not broken below January's lows yet. So still inside month. Uh, there are only two weeks left of trading though. Inside month. The uh, the important thing of you know important part of this is that if it remains inside month. Let's say by the end of next week, you could expect to have to, you could expect to have some sort of pullback um, or some sort of chop here. As if you stay inside, it'll have no no choice but to uh, turn around, and you'll see that on the lower time frame charts first. On the weekly chart, this is what we're seeing now. All indication is that we're going to take out Jan's lows because here's the pattern, right? Outside and up, we said that once this low got taken out, we were watching for that low. We have the opportunity of coming back out the other side and taking up this low here now because that creates this little broad information. If you don't know how it's drawn, if it's the one of the first times you're tuning into this video, it, if it works out, it will end up looking something like this, right? So that will be your broad information 
that's what it's going to end up looking at. It's going to take out that low and perhaps go a little bit lower, okay? Or continue to break down until this thing goes to to zero because it's an uh, it's an ETF that is <laughs> banked uh, that is meant to go to zero. So that's the possibility there, and that's right now the expectation that we take out the lows of January. If this low does not get taken out, that's something you definitely want to know about, right? Because the VIX is showing you here that if you cannot take out Jan's lows and the um, uh, the uh, equities are making all-time highs, then there's that divergence going on there. So for now, that's what we want to be waiting for or looking at. We want to look at, let's mark this week's ranges. Okay, so this week's range, the high and low, where do we transact now in regards to price in relation of this past week's range? Okay, so past this past week, we broke below that, we broke below this low here, and we just continue, we just continue downward. So I'll show you the significance of that in a couple of moments. But right now, it is full time from alignment to the downside. So there's no chop going on here, right? It's just basically down because, right, here's your orange line. That's your monthly, sorry, that's your monthly open. That's February. Here's your quarterly open. And once you broke below, you know, and stayed below this area here, it's below, you know, then you're trading below the weekly open as well. So that's full time from alignment to the downside now with VIX. Okay. So on the daily chart, it looks something like this. So, Going into uh, last week, so here, you recall, this is the prior week's low, right? So there's your prior week's low, it comes up, and here's your your past Friday or last Friday's close. Monday, it opens right in the range, and then breaks below Friday's low. So immediately, that puts the weekly low, the prior week's low, in play. And then on Tuesday, you break below it. Yes, it turns green on you, but then it's a continuation, okay? So there's a continuation move there, and VIX now just slowly melting and looking to take out um, uh, January's lows, okay? So small little uh, move here. We had a small Thursday little blip up, took out Wednesday's highs, and then on Friday again, they just slow. it's very, very tight stuff. It was an inside day on, on equities for most names are SPY, Qs, and the, and the Dow on uh, Friday, but the VIX was able to break below, okay, Thursday's lows. So it's just melting slowly, slowly now to the downside. So um, continue to watch and see how that plays out. We're expecting to see those lows get taken out. If it doesn't, you definitely want to be aware of that. Okay, so for now, we'll draw on our ranges. I'll put that line back in again. And this condition, this condition will remain, meaning the, 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 the bearish bias will remain until we take out a prior week's low. Uh, high, excuse me, right? There's no reason to try to pick bottoms here because there's no signs of any kind of reversal that's going to be significant. You might get a daily reversal, right? Like maybe a small one, but in order for things to really turn around, as I've been saying in many, many videos, you at least want to see the weekly reverse. And then for it to be a bigger reversal, you're going to see, you need to see the monthly reverse. And in order to see a really large reversal, you need to see the quarterly chart reverse. And right now, here, look at the quarterly chart. That is not done going down yet. Well, it's, they're not going to reverse it yet, so it's a little hard to see, but there you go. I'll put on log scale just to get the uh, the visual, right? So this month is not closed yet. You have two, you have two, sorry, this quarter is not closed yet. You still have uh, two weeks left of this of this uh, month, and then you have, you know, a full month left of the month of March before the quarter closes. The only way for this quarter, right, to become bullish for the VIX is if you can somehow correct to create a reversal. All right, so the, how do you create a reversal? Well, you have to break above a prior bar's high. Okay, so what's the prior bar? That there, way over here. So, yes, I'm not saying it's a, it's, it's a, a possibility that we don't sell off a bit on equities, that's possible, but to see a major reversal, it's gonna change the entire trend. It's gonna be very, very difficult during this quarter. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's talk about SPY, the mirror opposite. And this is why we do it, right? I said it last week, the benefit of seeing the VIX and the SPY um, in conjunction or in tandem, and I'm gonna tie this thing on the side here so that we save some space, is that it allows us to see the same picture but from two different perspectives, right? So if you're always used to, to looking at the charts from a bullish perspective, it's very, very beneficial to examine it from the bearish perspective and vice versa. By looking at things the opposite way, it gives you the mental flexibility of being able to see the same picture from two different angles or perspectives. That increases your mental flexibility and the ability to take action when the time comes to take a different opinion. So 
Let's start with the spy. What can you say about the spy? Wow, it is full on bullish, right? So it is going right in the highs. Momentum, outside bar, up, 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 up. Remember, January looked a little bit dicey because it turned to a shooting star, but this doesn't mean anything in one bar. One bar has no context. Um, or one bar has no significance because you need to see the next bar. This bar was very, you know, looked very, very shaky because had it broken below Jan's lows, then there could have been the possibility of coming back to the range again. But that never happened. And in fact, you know, the buyers countered this shooting star with, how do you counter that? With a big <laughs> green bar. That basically wipes away any memory of this bar. Look, look how people think, right? This is the way most people think. They see that bar and they get scared, right? Like that bar there, oh my goodness, it's a shooting star. The world's going to end. It's the beginning of uh, the crash until that bar hits. Right, and everyone forgets about the prior bar. <laughs> so that that's exactly what's going on here. Is that now? And I'll, I'll turn off this log scale. We don't we don't need that anymore. Um, that has been negated. This bearish signal, if you even call it that, has been more of a warning sign. It's not a signal until you break below the prior uh, once low. This warning sign has now been negated with this because it took out the prior high. There's no chance now. The only way for this thing to get really bearish on the monthly chart that is, is for this to turn into a outside bar, right? If somehow the, the, the sellers can step up with two weeks left of trading to take it from up here all the way down here and make it an outside bar. And even then, that doesn't necessarily mean the next bar is going to be a, a down bar because they can easily fight back again and take it to the upside. So to see the reversal, you need to have one more bar. So let's imagine, okay? Let's imagine that at the end of February, the bar ends like this. Now, for there to be a reversal in March, you have to take out Feb's lows right there. Then that's a reversal. That's an up-down reversal. Okay, it would look something like this. See here in Jan of 2018, it's an up, and then this bar here was a down reversal. Okay, because it broke below the prior month's low. Then, inside bar creates a stalemate. Right, so here's your pri here's your price action, uh, you know, one-on-one lesson, and then it goes inside bar down. It looked bearish. But when this happens, comes back in the range, and they take it above this bar's high, that's an inside bar reversal back to the upside again. You can expect everyone to get tested, and that's what they did, right? So this high here is higher than that high. Okay, so for now, bearish con uh, bullish condition continues with momentum. Outside bar up, 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 right? No lower lows right now. Momentum, full force. Okay, now on the weekly chart, let's go over here. Okay. And we're back to just basically wall, you know, climbing the wall of worry. This is what's happening now. The the markets are telling everyone right now that this narrative is not going to shake it, right? So when a market can brush off negative news the way this market is doing, it is in a wildly bullish environment, right? This is uh, you know the North American equities market is the place to be right now for safety, right? That's what the that's what the the stock market is signaling is that if you want to have protection and you want to have you know, the, 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 the most risk-free asset possible that's still speculative, then you want to go to the North American equities markets. Because, number one, you don't have the, you know, the kind of uh, political mess and economic mess that's going on in, in Europe. And you don't have, you know, the, obviously the coronavirus hasn't hit the U.S. yet like it has hit Asia. So right now, these markets are the, are the safest place to be if you want to have a little bit of return. Surely you can jump into bonds, but people are still chasing uh, chasing yield or returns. Okay, so SPY right now, we had the reversal past week, and now we're climbing up. We broke above the prior week's high, right? And this means that, you know, it's a continuation move now. So for now, we'll just mark that. We want to see how we trade in relation to this past week's, this past week's high, okay? So on the two-day chart, here is your little reversal that happened. So going into last week here, right? Here's your opposite uh, perspective that we have of the VIX. We had a pullback here on Friday, right? And then we had a gap down on Monday. We gapped down on Monday because, once again, right, there was, you know, the coronavirus, coronavirus scares, our fears about, you know, perhaps being there, it being more of a pandemic and it not being contained. So the markets gapped down on potential fears and they immediately bought it back. So it opens down here. Once it comes back through the range, right, there's your potential outside day. When this bar gaps down and it comes into here, right, it breaks above the prior day's low, it means you gap fill, or it's not quite a gap fill until you take out the close. But once you get back on the range, there's always a possibility that it comes out the other side. You see this here, this bar there, we talked about it you know, a couple weeks ago, actually a few weeks ago now, on 24th of January, it gaps up and comes back on the range and comes out the other side. That's an outside bar. 
that's the possibility when you gap up and you come back through okay so that's what happened here as well you gap up you come back in you come through the other side let's look at this up this one here same same thing right you gap down buyers buy it back once you get into the prior bars low is a possibility it doesn't always happen but there's a possibility for outside days these are what's these are how outside days are created this is the entry bar of volatility that trips up most traders and frankly that's which makes trading difficult it happens on all time frames too right it doesn't doesn't happen just on on um uh, on the daily chart what's unique about equities is of course that you have gaps right so the forex market you have you know you have fewer gaps and of course intraday charts let's say you're looking at a, a 15 minute chart usually you're not going to get gaps on intraday charts unless you're talking about very low liquidity stocks so for the most part you don't see gaps that get filled on on, uh, on intraday charts but this is a great you know this is a great signal because the market's showing you the strength right it's it's selling off in the morning at the open and then their buyers are buying it in the hole and creating a reversal intraday right so anyone who got short in this sequence they kind of timed this top here right they thought they were gonna make some money maybe they're gonna get fill this area here they were they were wrong and they were forcefully stopped out of those trades so after Monday people got had to get repositioned again Monday goes outside bar up up that's your momentum move gets extinguished on Thursday because of the gap down but look what they did once again it gapped down came back in the range out the other side right so anyone here okay gets stopped out so they get stopped out and it makes all-time highs on Thursday and Friday doesn't do much it's an inside day okay so back to our uh, weekly chart here I'm just gonna re redraw our ranges that's what you want to be looking for now okay because this Monday this past Monday we broke above the prior week's highs so now it's a continuation move right that's the continuation move that we talked about now on the two-day chart you just want to look at this first off you want to see definitely how this outside inside bar resolves on on Tuesday on the two-day chart it is momentum okay so right now the two-day chart showing you here's your Monday Tuesday bar your Wednesday Thursday bar and here's your Friday if it stays inside or you know if it goes higher it's still momentum okay because it's outside bar up up until a low gets taken out this bar this bar still not closed yet do you see that low get taken out the bias is to the upside on the two-day chart Okay, the bias is to the upside. Q's now. Slightly different chart, but very, very similar. T trading in very, very tight correlations. But the Q's chart is the strongest of them all. So outside bar, up, up, up. No shooting star in January. Okay, so look at the move now for the month of Feb. Plus 7%, right? So that is not giving up. It is uh, going gangbusters into highs. Weekly chart, we had that small reversal two weeks ago, right? Here we go, and it went down one side. To pop back up again this small gap here did not get filled I, I pointed that out two weeks ago there was a gap there was, it was three cents away from getting hit they get they could not fill that gap and so that gap that line remains there all right so now going up up and we'll just draw our, our, uh, our ranges but there we go you know we took out the prior week's high and it looked like this same exact type of scenario that played out on the spy played out on the cues right so it goes inside and up on Friday but then it opens down looking like an inside bar reversal but the buyers buy it back right away creating the outside bar just like this buy outside up up then outside inside on the daily so now we're waiting to see how does this outside inside pattern resolve on tuesday and on the cues same thing here um but even more momentum check out the momentum it hasn't had a lower low since the 31st of january right so this entire month of February we're two weeks into trading the queues have not logged in a lower low on the two-day chart that's called momentum ladies and gentlemen so until you see a logo taken out that means this one here that's the you know that's when you want that's you know a sign that some of that momentum is being extinguished it doesn't mean the entire rally's over and far far from it as I said already and I pointed out in passing we have to take out some higher time frames we have to see those reversals happen before people get discouraged from buying but right now look we had this situation where it was a really big momentum move um, and that got extinguished here but they started up again right there right so once this thing happened outside bar right power came right, right back into play again at the beginning of February 
gapped up and has not looked back. It trapped a bunch of people in the sequence. You know, go back uh, three weeks. I talked about it. it. Trapped a bunch of people there, and you know they're not. If they did not cover, you know they they are underwater and they're getting squeezed. And there, and you cannot tell how high this thing will go because we're hitting all time highs. There is no resistance, right? There is no resistance uh, here. So at this point here now, it's basically just trend following slash herding, and there's no limits to see how you know how far this market could could go. Okay, but as I pointed out in last week's video, there are structural issues with this rally, especially the underlying technicals and breadth. So if and when we do get a reversal, and you can't time these things, you just have to wait for price to, to tell you, once you get that reversal, expect there to be some quick retracements back in to, to cover some of these gaps. Because right now, yeah, the internals are still weak. Let's talk about Dow now, because that's a very similar chart, and then we'll talk about Russell last today. We got Dow, same picture. Outside bar, up, 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 up. So still, there's your momo up condition on the monthly chart. Weekly chart, here we go, right? So we talked about it th what, three weeks ago now, the potential for an inside bar reversal, right? Inside bar, down, reversal, right? Because anyone who got short here made a bunch of money here. They thought they did anyways, until it came right back against them again and stopped them out. That high was higher than that high, and now they're just proceeding higher. So we just, once again, let's we'll draw in our ranges, and let's see now. Uh, how high this rally takes us. As long as we don't break below the prior week's lows, this rally is in, you know, this rally is going to continue. So now, let us put us put that into perspective. So there's our our lines. I'm just going to double check here. I want to make sure this thing here is being displayed across. Yes, that's correct across all of our time frames on the daily. Yeah, that's correct. All right. Actually, I want to just double check that one more time. Excuse me. I'm going to turn that off in this one here. Okay, and this line here now, we don't need that on that chart. Okay, so Dow a little bit weaker uh, going into into the weekend, but you know the ranges is very very tight, so it's nothing to be um, to be too too concerned about right now. But here's your outside and up condition, exact same pattern, right? So once you understand price action, um, you can just see different variances of it, but essentially the same. Um, same things are going on across all the all the um, equities markets. Here is the outside day on Monday. We had that on the Dow. Oh, sorry, we had that on the Qs. We had that on the Spy. Um, and then basically, you know, it was a gap down, reversal, come back through, and then it's off to the races, right? Outside bar up. This lost its momentum here on Thursday. Okay, but they and they try to break it down lower on Friday. But the buyers bought it right back again, and now creating a hammer, right? So now it's a hammer. You sh it shows the excess demand here. It shows demand that supply got lapped up by the buyers and they bought it back and it's back in the range again. And look, you're basing here right on the prior, like right on the prior highs, right? So there's your there's your prior highs, comes back to, to test it. And uh, and so that was the prior week's high, right? So that was the prior week's high, comes up, comes back in. They test the prior week's high, they they held it. They could not keep it below. And that continues to be bullish for, for the Dow. Two day chart looks like this. Okay, two day chart. So it's outside bar up and then uh, now down. Can they, can the sellers do anything with this or not? So if the buyers on choose to come in and turn this bar green and they continue to go higher, then uh, then this could easily turn to an outside bar again and uh, that could continue the momentum move to the upside. Okay, so as you can tell by my language today, I'm not calling for any reversals anytime soon. This, uh, you know, that could, that could certainly change on Tuesday if we have a gap down or some sorts. Uh, but if it gets lapped up again, they, they buy it right back, then uh, then yeah, the, the 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 trend will continue. Okay, but I'll I'll just give you one final explanation before I move on. So let's imagine the coming week, right? So here's the week of uh uh, uh so this past week, down the Dow. If the markets gap up for how well for whatever reason, all right? If the gaps up, imagine what would cause it to be an outside bar next week. It would require that the markets. Either here's one scenario: it gaps up, and then comes back through the range again. That would be unexpected, right? That would that would that would definitely um, uh, uh, I think that would definitely shake a lot of people. Another scenario is you open in this range, transact to the upside, and then come back down to the downside again, right? Creating the outside bar. That's your other option of creating that outside bar. Or lastly, somehow you you open up. You somehow trade down, and you come back up through the range again, and that creates a green outside bar. 
The first two scenarios were red outside bars. The last, the, this last scenario was a green outside bar. Okay, or you just continue up, or 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 you break below here, right? So you open this he sequence here somewhere, and somehow you break below that low. Okay, and that would be the different p potential combinations there uh, of uh, of building blocks for price. The final would be, of course, an, outside, an inside bar, right? So you stay inside, stay inside the range. Okay, so those are kind of the five broad scenarios of what's possible with price across all time frames. So once you get that understanding, then you can apply it across any time frame. Let's talk about Russell now. So Russell, this is the uh, the one uh, index that has not hit all-time highs yet. So certainly uh, a lot weaker than the rest of the indices, but holding in fine so far for the month of February. Inside month right now, sitting right on that broad information trend line. Okay, so inside bar, two weeks left. Weekly chart, we did the reversal two weeks ago. This you know, so it went down, it went back up again, and it finally completed the inside bar reversal pattern. So here's inside bar down. And the question was when, if and when we can take out that pivot high, it happened this past week. We broke above the prior week's high and we had enough strength. Actually, that's not true. We were just a few cents below. That's not true, is it? Let's see here. 168.99, 168.95. So four cents away from taking that pivot high. It's so very, very close. And uh, I expect that to get taken out. But if it doesn't get taken out, then that's something you definitely want to know about. Okay, because that shows you that the the bulls just ran out of ran out of steam. So right now on the daily chart, you have here an outside inside forming. For, it has formed now on Friday, right? So you definitely want to see how this breaks on Tuesday because we got the outside inside on Russell, spies, and Qs. So this will be significant because now we will see which way it breaks on Tuesday. Finally, the two-day chart. Outside and that's our inside bar and up inside bar right now. If this still gets taken out right there, that's an inside bar reversal of the downside. The only thing is that you have a lot of time frames still supporting this. There's your monthly open down here in orange, and there's your blue line, which is the quarterly open. So if price can remain above this area, you have full time from alignment. Okay, um, but for now, I guess that's what you really want to wait uh, watch for is how does price transact against these three time frames your monthly open wherever the week opens on Tuesdays so wherever that week opens and the quarterly open continue to watch for that TSX now looking a lot like north like the US equities markets hitting all-time highs once again nice big green month for the TSX already up 3% for the month of February okay same thing for a weekly chart big green week big green week not big but you know decently green week for uh, the TSX right there up a one point zero nine percent and uh, on the uh, on the two-day chart let's just take a look at this it went inside bar and up and then uh, it, it, it did create a lower it did break below the prior week's low or uh, sorry the prior bars low okay so here now you're gonna wait and see can it come back through the range or not but right now you have so, so many you know different time frames supporting this it's full time from the alignment to the upside any pullback at this point is still going to be viable, right? It's not something where you, if you're going to be taking shorts, as I've been saying for a while now, these are profit-taking trades. You're not trying to look for massive moves to the downside. If you're going to be short, you got to be short fast, and it's okay to take small profits because the trend is still up until you see these bigger reversals. On the four-hour chart, we do have a small technical pattern here. We have an inside, outside, inside forming on the on the four-hour. So just like the uh, U.S. markets. How do we break that outside inside condition? You can expect to see some significant break here because of the the pent up pent up demand and uh, and, and the and the the um, uh, consolidation that's happened here over the past 12 hours, right? So Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, tight tight stuff there. The markets will eventually pop out of that uh, and and break that consolidation. EM now emerging markets. Okay, so okay, so for now, outside, outside, inside, no one knows yet what to do as pertains to the, the coronavirus. Is the story, you know, has have we hit the peak news flow, or is it still is it still unraveling or unfolding? We no one knows, right? So right now, the markets are guessing, and it's keeping this bar inside the prior month's range, undecided still. 
Okay, this past week we did go inside weekend up. We were able to break the prior week's range, but they, they cannot keep it up. So it came back in the range. So now what you don't want to see if you're a buyer is you do not want to see that low get taken out. This prior week's low, because if you get that prior week's low taken out, then that's a inside bar up and down reversal. Okay, so that's an inside bar reversal if we break below this past week's low. So on the daily chart, this is what happened. So if you recall, what I said last week is that you're kind of stuck now in between a couple of big time frames. There's your quarterly open and there's your monthly open. Okay, so you're inside this big range. This is what the inside month looks like. It's that. Okay, so you have these big spreads here and now you're just basically transacting inside of a channel or, or tight range. And this is why the, cho the trading is so choppy because you have mixed time frames. Okay, so you have the week there, you have the month down here, you have the quarterly up here. Right now, it's, it's, it's chopping in between these areas looking for liquidity. On Monday, though, it went inside bar and down on Friday. And on Monday, as soon as it comes back up here, it takes up that prior week's high. All right, a prior week's, uh, sorry, Friday's high. That turns an inside bar reversal. Then on Tuesday, boom, takes out that pivot. Then Wednesday, it takes out that pivot. Okay, and then it pulls back in the range again, as we said. And now we're getting get that chop once again, as there is no clear trend as each chart looks slightly different each time frame you have a slightly different uh, slightly different open okay TLT doing a lot of n nothing this week so right now inside month tight stuff this month very very uh, indecisive big doji right now for uh, or little doji right now for the month of February same thing for this past week inside weeks or inside the prior weeks range now you definitely want to see how this week's range breaks because that will be significant and when that breaks you want to see can price break above and stay either beyond or above or below these ranges because that will be a continuation move okay and right now that's that's basically the ranges you want to be wait, waiting for is either wait for price to break and see which way it takes it takes it takes it out or look for a setup that's going to break the prior ranges so it's a wait and see mode right now for, for TLT. And to be frank, it's kind of the same kind of thing with gold. So right now, people are having a hard time trying to price price is you know price the environment. Is it a risk on or risk off environment? You can make you know the case for either one right now. And the markets, rank, frankly, are, are especially around gold and, and bonds are undecided right, right now. Inside month right now for, for gold futures, so MGC. I'm looking at that contract a lot nowadays. Outside inside on the weekly, you definitely want to see how this breaks, right? So this will be significant, and I'll I'll be prepared to to, uh, to take a trade on on, on this sequence to see how that breaks. MGC outside inside on the week, and then on the daily now we had a strong close for gold, but it is still inside week, right? We're trading inside this tight range, inside of the prior week's range. That's why it's it's tight stuff here, and a bit of time frame conflict, right? Because if you look at the at the uh, monthly chart, the month's red, right? Because this is the open up here. If you look at the quarterly chart. The quarterly chart's green because that's the quarterly open down here. If you look at the weekly chart, it's also a green chart because you're trading above the weekly open. But you do have that mixed time frame conflict. So now you want to see if it can, you know, make a stand here and break that time frame conflict. You have to break above that orange line for this thing to turn green on the monthly chart. Okay? So that's what you want to be looking for now and seeing how does it break this week's inside week. BTC had a, a really big move this past week. Uh, but now it's, it's since pulled back uh, today. This today is Saturday the fifteenth. So uh, on the big picture, we finally got the inside bar reversal long signal that uh, I've, I've been talking about for a while. Inside bar down on the quarterly chart, right? As once this high gets taken out, and it did this past week, then it puts this potential pivot in play. Okay. So when you look at the quarterly chart, you can clearly see it's very clean. All right, happened back here too. Inside bar down, inside bar. This is a uh, inside bar reversal once this high gets taken out going after that pivot that pivot and it went a lot higher here inside bar down that pivot got taken out now if it can stay if it can stay above here now if they're going after that pivot there and I've said been saying it 13 174 potential okay so month so far up 5.85 percent okay on the week the week has now turned red so it had been a green week uh, and working off this this inside an up move so it's still a up week but now with uh, one day left of trading you're you're now it has now turned red but this is not significant right you need to see 
a prior week's low get taken out before things begin to, uh, before that maybe the the composure of the market changes. But for now, you know we have not had any lower lows since when here, right? We broke down below that prior week's low, the uh, last week of December, right? And then we had the we've had uh, nothing but a big bullish move since the beginning of January. So BTC, this is what uh, the signal that kind of broke the week to the downside. This one here had been basing. Right on the weekly open, that's the purple line, and went inside outside on the daily chart. This is why we were, we're, we're watching those outside inside signals. And then the outside inside broke to the downside. It actually broke up first, it went inside up, lured in some buyers who immediately were wrong, right? So they bought up here and they got immediately flushed out. This is the challenge though when you're buying into highs like this, right? So when you're buying into highs and you're chasing price, this is what can happen because here you don't have the benefit of of good trade location. You're chasing highs because you're expecting this thing to go higher, right? And so you're kind of you're, if you're buying here, this is the first time you're buying Bitcoin. You're kind of ch you know you're you're definitely chasing and you're on the tip of the sword, so to speak, right? The price does not have to do much in order to stop you out. So you this is a you know if if you want to be buying Bitcoin and, and putting the money into it. You want to be looking for reversals to get into the trade and not always chasing highs, right? You're chasing highs, you're going to get stopped out before you can, you can before you can actually ride any decent moves. So you're looking for reversals to get into trades, okay? So Bitcoin now, we want to see how that unfolds and see, and I'll draw the ranges in now. Here, you want to see if this past week's low can get taken out. So with several, with, you know, maybe a, a day and a half left of trading, when we have a new week showing up, right? Let's say it opens up in here somewhere on the daily chart. It's an outside bar right now. If it goes outside inside, let's say if you know on Sunday you have an inside bar, because this is a pretty big range. This is a four percent move here um, on the fifteenth. On the sixteenth, let's say it just stays inside, outside inside. That'd be interesting to see how that breaks, because then you could potentially take out that prior week's low. That sets up a large reversal. And not to say that the whole tr trend changes, but then that gives you an opportunity to get back long in if and when a bullish upside reversal occurs. Now, ETH, Ethereum USD, that thing has been on fire up until today. A bit of a pullback, nothing significant, but um, this thing has been on fire. So, three month chart, inside bar reversal. Okay, so inside bar down. There it is once again, the inside bar reversal breaks above there. Now they're going after that pivot there. One, sorry, three, eighteen thirty. That's reasonable. Three eighteen thirty. Okay. So on the weekly chart, right? It has been, you know, I got into Ethereum down here, so you can see the reversal. You know, once we get a higher high, this pivot high gets taken out. It's gone. Okay, so it's gone. If you can get in down here, it's way better than getting up here because now you're inside the Bollinger Bands and you're chasing price. You're you're extended and you're if you're buying in these areas, you're chasing. You don't have the protection of good trade location. So Ethereum does that. It all started down here, right? And now, a bit of a pullback. We had a huge, uh, you know, run up this past week. We had one day here where it was up 12%. Yesterday was up 6%. Today it's down, you know, 5.8%. So, you know, net net, you're still up for the week. Um, and I think for the week, it's going to be hard for the bears to turn the Ethereum chart around. The Bitcoin chart's definitely a lot weaker, right? But in order for the Ethereum bears to really step in, they got to take out this past week's low, right? So how are they going to do that? That is, you know, you still, you, you have to break it. Your, let's say you close somewhere around here. From there, that means you got to push it from here down here. It has to break down 20%. Not impossible. Cryptos have been known to do that, but uh, that's not an easy chart to break down versus, let's say, the, the Bitcoin chart, right? The BTC chart. It does not take that much of a move to create a weekly reversal. So let me see if I can find that Bitcoin chart again. Where was it? Bitcoin USD, USD, there you go. Yeah, so right there, right? So wherever we close at, let's just you know say it's there, it's only a 2% move to break below the prior week's low, right? So you wanna wait for that. Can it break below? And if it begins to continue down, that's the continuation. However, if it breaks below and pops back up again, there's always that possibility for that outside bar to happen and you want to pay attention to that. Okay, so that being said, let's now wrap things up by going through a few um, fast fire charts. And this last segment here, I'm just gonna go through some names 
to kind of analyze the money flows. So using a modified Sharpe ratio, I'm just looking at the names that continue to show where money is either going into or, or leaving. So right now, let's begin with the with the, with the uh, some of the dogs. And man, the oil sector continues to be a sector, all right, where money is flowing out. So XOP, everything related to oil, glass, oil gas and production, exploration, uh, the integrated oils, they've all been hit. Right, so XLP going right in the lows. So that means you have names like you know Diamond Offshore. Right, look at that chart. They're not relenting. The money's still leaving this um, this sector. These stocks, WLL. All right, so Whiting Petroleum. Ouch. Um, there's so many more of them. You can just you know type anything you want. WTI. Another one here. Wow, that's you know the sell-off has has been uh, you know outstanding. You know amazing. Um, so that's the old names are always volatile like that when when. Uh, when the macros turn down. Same thing though with the, another sector, um, st steel names, right? So think of names like Nucor. Money continues to flow out of there. The pace of uh, the trend continues to, to, to be aggressively to the downside. So that means money is leaving. Uh, Nucor, letter X, right? So there's no bottom yet in US Steel, no bottom yet in, in uh, well, Alcoa did, did bounce a bit here, hasn't broken down, but um, but certainly not uh, not a fun place to be, to be trading right now if you are to the long side. Now, uh, Wayfair got hit uh, um, before earnings here. You have earnings in uh, a couple weeks. So right now, Wayfair, the money's been getting out of it. And look on uh, Thursday's past weeks, past week's Thursday. Look at the volume here uh, as we had a, a significant sell-off there at 14% on Thursday. Spotify on earnings got hit. So actually, the earnings are here, but they did not like it. right? So here is... After the earnings move, it's been nothing but down, and money money is flowing out of Spotify right now. Another technique that that's uh, that we're seeing uh, outflows Sono, right? So this uh, speaker company, for whatever reason, uh, the money is, is beginning to, to to the trend to the out the downside is beginning to to um, increase. Neo, Chinese car company, uh, electric car company manufacturer, they are getting you know in trouble now with the coronavirus. And their inability to keep their plants open, it's affecting their cash flows. So that's the that's one of the names to uh, to watch. There is Neo. Now, in terms of the um, uh, some of the stars, where's money going? Well, people are chasing yield, so they're going into utilities. Man, utilities continues to be outperforming, right? So um, you could argue again that people are chasing yield and they're looking for safe assets. And there, those utility companies are, are really shining. So we've talked about these in the past. You got your, you know, XLU, that's your ETF, and you have things like NEE, Nextera. You get to your Dominions of the world, AEP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But these things are hitting these multi-year highs, if not all-time highs, as people chase yield. The stock I brought up last week or two weeks ago, RNG, got had had strong earnings. This continues to be a strong one. So software company doing really, really well. It needs to, you know, to rock up here. No pullbacks, right? No pullbacks. Do momentum to the upside. Uh, space, wow. You know, I think Tesla's doing well. Look at space. This thing has doubled in the course of uh, two weeks. So it was trading at 14 bucks. When was that? Right? At the beginning of Feb. Now it's at uh, close to 29 bucks, right? So doubled in the, in the course of two weeks. So look, outside, inside, and up. Why do we like that signal? And that's why you like it. The outside, inside, and then up. Okay? So there goes that one. So space. Lennar, man, the home builders, we've talked about it now for the past, man, it's been months now, but people are, people and money is going into, or people are putting their money into home builders. So Lennar getting close to those multi-year highs. That means, you know, home building, the home builder ETF, XHB, continues to be strong. Real estate, just like something like RE, continues to be strong. So that space there, people continue to like that area. Uh, software company people like as well, AYX. So this one here, earnings came out this past uh, week on the 13th, and they liked it a lot. And this has been an aggressive, a strong trend. Money has been flowing into this one, and this has not has now hit all-time highs, AYX. One file name, I think one uh, to keep on your watch list, CRSP. Interesting name here, potential buy signal here. So not a big trend yet, but this may be the beginning of something. Uh, this past week, here I'll just show you. This past week, we broke above the prior week's highs. We had been in a significant downtrend. This may be a reversal signal right here. You do have the quarterly open right there that acted, acted as resistance, but now you can just eyeball it. You can see what happened here, right? So there's your prior week's high, okay? So there's your prior week's high, and now what happened was on Monday, so here's your Monday, 
it breaks above the prior week's high. Okay, goes higher, higher. Earnings comes up, and then they dump, they dump it, right? So gaps up in earnings, turns it outside day and down. Stops right at the prior week's high. So if price now can begin to create a reversal, so let's say you break down again, but it doesn't stay down, comes back up above the prior week's high, this turns into a potential reversal, and this thing could be potentially signaling a move back to the upside again, and you may have found that um, near-term bottom on that weekly chart. Okay, so we went through a lot of names today. Uh, you know, went through a lot of all our regular uh, sectors and and indices, and uh, the uh, you know the, the markets are doing what it's uh, been known to do, and that is to climb a wall of worry. For now, again, the underlying macro conditions or are or, or the underlying structural conditions are not strong, but the um, then the market narrative, the bullish market narrative is, is very strong, and the markets are shrugging up any negative news. And this is just telling you right now, until that changes, you do not want to be fighting the trend. So, as this, as <laughs> we said in the past, the trend is your friend until the end. With that said, I'm wishing you a, a good trading week. Uh, happy U.S. President's Day for our all of my American listeners. And as always, if you enjoy these videos, uh, please give it a big thumbs up. Click on subscribe to get notified when these videos drop. If you have any questions, there is the comment section on YouTube or on the blog site. And if you have any uh, other instruments you want me to add to the analysis, again, feel free to drop me an email on the blog site or through the comment section. So have a great trading week and happy trading.